connected to the family of Julia Bryant. We want to remember them in our prayers. And not only that, the sake of, of our church, we want to keep them lifted up, uh, especially Sister Diane Lomax. We want to keep her in prayer. Uh, Brother Neil, we're so grateful that the Lord has blessed him to be able to return back to his home. He had been hospitalized, but by the grace of God, he allowed him to be able to return to his own home. And so we're grateful for that. Uh, I do want to keep our frontline workers. We've got to continue to lift up these men and women uh, who are certainly sacrificing their lives daily uh, for the welfare of others. And, and we know that list includes nurses, doctors, uh, firemen, policemen, uh, all those who are what we call essential workers. Uh, we want to keep all of them lifted up in our prayers. And so finally, we want to keep the body of Christ certainly in this hour uh, lifted up. Certainly all pastors today, we do want to lift them up because this is an unusual time even for pastors to certainly lead God's people. But we know that all our help, it certainly comes from the Lord and that God has assured us that through Christ we can certainly do all things. And so, so at this time, for those who are out there listening and viewing, we want you to bow with us for our prayer. God, our Father, we come now, Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, today for bringing us to this present moment. God, we thank you for the day and certainly for giving us a new day, for letting us rise this morning. We thank you, Lord, because we know if it had not been for you, that none of us would be here this moment. God, we just thank you because you are still a God that's worthy to be praised. So God, we pray today for these requests that we have certainly trusted into your care. God, we're praying for all those who are sick today. Oh Lord, even during this time where a virus is certainly seen to be overtaking this world. God, it is affecting lives. It is even causing some to die. But God, we know that you are still a God who's able to heal. And so in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will release healing throughout this world. We pray for those who are hospitalized. We pray for those that are in nursing homes. Oh God, we're praying for them because there have been many cases where the nursing homes have become hot beds, oh God, where this virus has now set in. But God, we're praying in Jesus' name that you will remember those right now that are in those facilities. We pray for the saving of their lives, for the healing of their bodies. So do it right now in the name of Jesus. And then, oh God, we pray, Lord, that you remember these essential workers, these frontline workers. We pray for them because daily in their lives, they are going out, oh God, to be a help to somebody, to provide a service for somebody. And we're praying that you will cover them as they go out and even as they come back in. We're praying because they got to go home to families and we're praying that their homes will stay safe, safe, oh God. So do it right now in the name of Jesus. And then, oh God, we pray for this entire world today. We're praying that even as many have gathered at homes and churches today to worship you, oh God, that the message of Jesus will go forth, that it will go forth with power and go forth with purpose. So God, do it right now in the name of Jesus. And then remember all of your children. Remember all of your servants today. Bless them, oh God, that they will certainly do your will, that they will not live in fear, but let them live in faith. Knowing that our God has promised them to leave us nor forsake us. So God, that is our prayer. And we just pray right now that when you do these things, let us in return lift our hands to you. Let us give you our praise. Let us know that you are a God who's been good and you're good all the time. And so God, bless right now in the name of Jesus. And then Lord, as we pray, let this prayer be a lift to somebody. Let this prayer be strength for somebody. Let this prayer be encouragement, oh God, for somebody right now. Somebody on the verge of giving up. Somebody on the verge of maybe wanting to take their life. Let them know, oh God, that there's still, oh God, a life to live, oh God. Do it right now in Jesus' name. And then, Lord, we pray for these that are in bereavement. Praying, oh God, for the Ryan Jones and all those families that are connected to, with them. Bless them in this time of bereavement. And let them find confidence in you knowing that 
try God who is present help in our trouble. So God, do that right now. And not only there, remember every family right now that's going through this time of death. Help them to know that help comes from you. Let them know that comfort comes from you. Let them know that you are a God who's present. So do it right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, when you do it, let us know that it's God who is moved. And do it, oh Lord, for your glory that we will give you all the praise. Now God, we thank you right now. We thank you for letting us be in this place today. And we pray, oh God, that we can worship you. We all pray, oh God, that we can give you praise today. We can pray, oh God, that you will, oh God, let us be able to enjoy even your presence. So do it right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, if there's anything that we have failed to ask, please, oh God, don't fail to grant it to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray, we thank God, and amen. God bless you at this time. We're going to receive another selection from our voices.
testimony uh, of saints who are assured that even in this time, God is still blessing us. And so we are glad that the time has come that we stand and proclaim his word for this day and certainly for this hour because uh, this has been a great time uh, from a preacher's standpoint uh, of us doing some unique ways of spreading the gospel. And, and we never could imagine that uh, we would have to be in stay home mode where at one period, some of us was doing it live from our homes. And I was telling Sister Adams that the Lord seemingly had to take us back to where it started. Yes, amen. And so, so we thank the Lord even for this use of technology that has certainly been a great blessing to the body of Christ. We, we have to appreciate that because now we have found ourselves being able to use it to the advantage of the Lord. Amen. And so that is a good thing and a great thing because uh, the Lord is letting us know that all things work together for good. Yes, and so at this time, before we go ahead, Father, let us just bow for our prayer. God, we thank you now for letting us stand this day, stand behind this sacred desk. We thank you for the blessing to be even before your people this day. We pray that the word that you have blessed us with will certainly be a blessing to every hearer this day, that it will certainly give them hope, that it will certainly inspire them, give them strength and encouragement, oh God, that your word is true. So God, use us now it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we would like to uh, look to a very familiar passage of scripture uh, that comes from Romans chapter 8. And we want to look at the latter part of that 8th chapter beginning at verse 35. And we will end at verse 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. Mm -hmm. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And today, just by way of a subject, we would like to share this thought. Nothing can keep us from it. Amen. Amen. Nothing can keep us from it. Here we are. And I know this seems to be the topic of the day that we are in the midst of a crisis. One that many did not know and certainly still are unsure when it's going to end. Mm -hmm. uh, this pandemic has been one of the most confusing and unusual epidemics that mankind has faced in its existence. <clears throat> it is a talk of times daily news that you and I seem to rise to each morning. It's just the focus of our times. Now this single event uh, has literally and if you look at this, has turned this world upside down. Amen. Doctors and scientists are working hard to find the right cure. Uh, leaders even of this present world are trying to figure out when it's the right time to stay Amen. If you want to say stay at home and lift these bands and get people back to work. People, we are aware of this are getting sick and many are dying. Many lives have been altered. The coronavirus has just changed our world and our lives. Amen. But in spite of what it has done to this world, and, and this is where we're going, this year and even to the lives of many, there is one hope that I have discovered. There is one thing that coronavirus cannot do. It cannot, nor will not, separate us from the love of God. Amen. Now listen, that's right, a good place if you want to say really to shout, because when we think about this virus and what it has caused, what it has done, 
uh, it has caused seemingly some separation from us physically. But my argument today is that it's not going to separate us from the love which is of God. Amen. Because the text that is before us is a classic question, and if you want to say answer scenario. Mm -hmm. As many of us who are familiar with this passage, I confess that it is a true statement of words. Because whatever invades our lives, and, and I like to say this without a doubt, it can never separate us from the love of God. Because yeah. personally, I have always been impressed with this particular text. It, it challenges us, it convicts us, and it comforts us. It's a reminder to us that nothing is more powerful than the love of God. Because what Paul says, uh, he is the writer that we understand, he speaks to believers of every generation. Now some would suggest that he was only talking to the saints of Rome, but I think I disagree because I believe that this has been a transgener what, transgenerational word, that it has been in every generation that believers have found out that there's nothing like the love of God. Yes, yes, yes. Because even we present day saints ought to be encouraged by these same words. Mm -hmm. This passage reaffirmed God's profound love for his people. Because no matter what happens to us, no matter what we face, we can never be separated from his love. Yes, amen. Because what is happening in the world right now should not drive us away from God. Yes. But I just feel it ought to bring us closer to him and allow his love to heal us. Because mm -hmm. what we sometimes fail to realize that believers have always had to face hardships. Yes. yes. And they have been of many sorts. Because Paul says here in the text that tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, and and I even like to add this, and even please. Yes. These things sometimes cause us to fear that we have been abandoned by Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But can I tell somebody today that Christ has still been on my side? Yes, right. he has. Amen. And, and I'm glad that we have enough promises in the word that he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. but, but Paul says that it is impossible to be separated from Christ. And I'm on his side. Because yes. if I'm in his hands. Yes, Jesus said it like this. That can't nobody pluck me. Out of his hands. Yes, Amen. But listen. Jesus went a step further and said it like this. That my father is greater than I. And can't nobody pluck you out of the father's hands. Yes. And so, so I'm glad that Paul is arguing this point. That nothing can separate us. Listen, nothing can keep us from it. Mm -hmm. And so his death on the cross, and this ought to be enough for us, was proof of his unconquerable love for us. Because yes. nothing can separate us from Christ's presence and his love. Yes. Listen, God tells us how great his love is, so we will feel totally secure in him. And I wonder, do anybody know you are secure in the Lord? Because of his love. Yes, yes. Hey, Amen. Think about it. Because his love has kept us. His love has provided for us. Yes. His love has been a constant present in the lives of those who love him. Yes. Yes. But listen, as we look to the text, first of all, we got to see that there a, there's a possibility that Paul says of being separated. Yes. Now, Paul, he starts by saying with a question, who shall separate us? From the love of Christ. And I'm glad he asked that question. But but he goes on to put some things out there. He says, can tribulation, mm -hmm. can distress, can persecution. He says, can famine, nakedness, pearl, or sword. And I like to say this, anything you can name, can it separate you from his love? Mm -hmm. Now, that's a possibility that Paul presents. Mm -hmm. Because it lets us see, brothers and sisters, it can't happen. He he just let us see that there's a possibility that some believe that we can be separated. But, mm -hmm. but Paul suggests that he wants to challenge those who read this. He says, who shall separate us? Now, some suggest that Paul is just speaking of a person. Mm -hmm. But I want to let you know, yeah, there are people who will try. 
to separate you. The enemy will plant people in your life oh, yeah. to try to separate you from the love of Christ. But, but Paul now names the things that we entertain at times in our life. Because guess what? We are in a storm right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I want to let you know that that storm has not separated us Amen. from the love of God. And, and so Paul presents this possibility of being separated because I need to name those things. That's what Paul is saying. Somebody under, thinking that tribulation would do it. Somebody thinks that distress will keep them from it. Nakedness or pearl or sword. But Paul finishes verse 35 with a question. By letting you understand this, that these things don't have the possibility. Right. And isn't that good that when you even think about your own self, mm -hmm. some of the things that you have faced, some of the things that you have been through, have it ever made you wonder, was God's love still in your life? And, and I like to suggest that God's love has been greater than anything mm -hmm. that we had to go through. Oh, yeah. So I'm glad that nothing can keep us from it. And, but, but secondly, Paul goes forth with something that ought to really make us more empowered. Mm -hmm. He talks about a proclamation to overcome separation. Yeah. Now look at what he put as it is written. And, and now Paul wants to go to the word. For thy sake, and that's Jesus, we are killed all the day long. Yes. He says we are like sheep. We've been accounted as sheep. You know, ready for a slaughter. But but here is what a lot of us get happy over. Verse 37. But but Paul has to say no to those things that's been written. Because listen to what he discovered. In all these things, we are more than conquerors yeah. through him that love us. Yeah. And I wonder, do anybody know that the Lord loves you? Oh, yeah. Do you know that you are overcoming? You are a conqueror yeah. because of the one that loves you. And so that's a proclamation that you can declare with your own mouth. I, I am convinced, listen, that I am more than a conqueror through him that love us. And, and, and if that don't sound like a confirmation, listen, or a proclamation to overcome separation, listen, that's what it's declaring. Yes, yes. That means that no, and all these things, and, and think about all those things, those things that he says like tribulation. Those things like distress, like persecution, yeah. famine, nakedness, a pearl, or so. He said, you are a conqueror over those things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And those things ain't going to separate you from the love of God, yeah. which is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And I don't know about you, I'm glad that nothing can keep me from it. Oh, yeah. Listen, I got personal right there because... The, listen, the subject is nothing will keep us from it. Yeah, right. but, but you better grab hold of it and take it for yourself. Come on, and, and speak that into your yeah. own self. That, yeah. that nothing is going to keep me from it. Yeah. And, and, and that is from this, from the love of God. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing is powerful enough. Listen, to stand in the way. The devil in hell ain't big and bad enough. <laughs> listen, what well, he All can right. stand in the way of God's love. All right. Yeah. Don't you know he's trying, but he's failing in every hand. Yeah. But, but I'm impressed by Paul here because Paul leaves us in chapter 8 with some words to keep us looking up. Yeah. Yeah. To keep us focused and to keep us believing that God's love is greater than anything oh, yeah. that will come against us. Yeah. Yeah. So you ought to be in verse 37. You ought yeah. to say that listen. And all things, listen, yes. we are more than conquerors. Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. And don't you, you got to love the plurality there when he says we now. He don't say nothing about I, but he will all saints to find themselves knowing that you are more than a conqueror yes. through him that loved us. Oh, yeah. Amen. And, and that's good news, brothers and sisters, whoever you are today. To understand that no matter what's going on in this time we call now, yes. that it's not keeping God's love from prevailing. Yes. I got to let you know God's love prevailed this morning. Come on now. Well, how do I know? We it touched you and me yes, to rise this day. Oh, yeah. that, that was love. Yeah. That, yeah. that was no clock that woke you yeah. up. That, that was a love tap. Amen. Yeah. That, that let you realize you were alive. Amen. And you were still hanging around. Yeah. And so finally, my friends, I'm glad as I get to this last point that it was a persuasion to never be 
separate. Yes. Now, verse 38 and 39 makes a claim because when Paul now shifts here, he, he leaves we and us now, but he goes back to himself. Mm -hmm. This was his own conviction. And, and somebody ought to now join on his side for I am. Yes, yes persuaded. That, yes. That's persuasion. Listen, Paul is now declaring for himself. I can't speak for nobody else. Y'all, I've already told y'all saints in Rome and you present they saints about mm -hmm. the love of God and what yes. he can do for all of us. But but now I got to talk about myself. Yes. He yes. said, for I am persuaded. Yes. And let's look at the assortment of things that Paul suggests that need a death. No life. Amen. He, he's now contrasting. Amen. This thing we call life. He says death nor life. Yes. He even says angels, principalities, powers. And I like this part, things present. Don't y'all know right now the coronavirus is present? Yes, yes it is. But I like to let you know it's not going to keep us Come on, brother. from the love of God. That's and, that's right. and, and, and that's why I had to stop there and make a little footnote in verse 38. For things present. Because yes, yes. things present are things that are happening right now. Trying to overcome us. Trying to conquer our faith. But but I don't let you know that Paul made it persuasive here. Oh, yeah. He says for his own self. None of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. That are present. Things that he says to come. That the future might hold. He even looks at it this way. He talks about height or depth. Yes. Listen, or any other creature. Yeah. And then he finalizes it by saying, shall be able. Come on now. And here comes the unison. Yes. Now. He says yes. to separate us. Yes. Listen, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen, Paul made it plain now that I wanted y'all to hear my story first, but but then I want others to join in and understand that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And, and aren't you glad that Paul shall, says shall be able? And I just believe that Paul is talking not only in a past tense, a present and a future tense, that nothing is going to keep us, listen, from the love of God. And, and isn't that good news? Yeah. That Paul wants us to understand that nothing can keep us from it. Yes. I don't know about you, but I'm happy when we look at this text again. And, and there's been a time that I have preached from the text. And, but God showed me something here just to talk about right now. That yes. nothing can keep us from it. Yes. And that means nothing can keep us from his love. And, and I'd like to let you know there's nothing like the love of God. Uh, Nothing comes close to his love. On, uh, listen, nothing yes. is more powerful than the love of God. Uh, yeah. His love, I like to say, keeps us from falling. Yes. Uh, and there is an old hymn that reminds us. Uh, I was sinking deep in sin, on, uh, far from the peaceful shore, uh, very deeply stained within. Uh, Seem to like sinking to rise no more. Uh, but he is the good news of that new uh, But the master of the sea uh, heard my despairing cry. Uh, from the waters lifted me up. Uh, now safe am I. Uh, here's the reason that love lifted me up. Uh, love lifted me up. Uh, when nothing else could help. Uh, hallelujah. Love lifted me up. Uh, Listen, that's a good place to just shut it down. Because uh, I want to let you know, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, nothing can keep us up uh, from the love of God. Uh, listen, coronavirus ain't going to do it. Uh, cancer can't do it. Uh, sickness can't do it. Uh, trouble won't do it. Uh, I thought you ought to look today. Uh, you need to be encouraged uh, and trust the Lord God. Uh, there are times like this. Uh, it seems as though uh, we are at standstill. Uh, it seems as though uh, we're making no tracks. Uh, but I gotta let you know, uh, while we're being still, uh, you can watch God. Uh, but did not he say, uh, by the words of David, uh, be still uh, and know that I am God. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I am happy today. Uh, just to know uh, that there's none like him. Uh, I'm so glad uh, for his love. Uh, uh, his love uh, has taken care of us. Uh, is there a witness right now? Uh, his love uh, has sheltered you. Uh, his love uh, 
that is what happens for you. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I'm just happy uh, when I look at this text. Uh, I see uh, the proof of God. Uh, I see uh, the power of God. Uh, I see uh, the presence of God. Uh, I see uh, the provision of God. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, I thought you might go. Uh, don't worry uh, about what's going on. Uh, no for fact, uh, nothing uh, can keep you from it. Uh, let the devil try. Uh, let his enemies come. Uh, let his evil uh, spirits arise. Uh, I got news for them. Uh, they can't keep us uh, from his love. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, we are proof of his love. Uh, John recorded uh, in the third chapter, uh, in the 16th verse, uh, of his gospel. Uh, for God so love the world, uh, that's right there, uh, proof of that love, uh, that he gave, uh, there's only the God the Son, uh, that whosoever, uh, that's an invitation, uh, that believe in him, uh, should not perish, uh, but have uh, everlasting life, uh, I don't know about you, uh, I'm so glad, uh, take it personal, uh, you ought to put your hand up uh, on your chest, uh, and say, Lord, uh, he loved me, uh, he loved me, uh, when I didn't love myself, uh, he loved me, uh, when I didn't love him, uh, I'm so glad, uh, his love, uh, his real love, uh, not artificial, uh, not superficial, uh, but his love, uh, that some describe uh, as a God love, uh, but I'm so glad, uh, his love, uh, gave us Jesus, uh, didn't he do it, uh, he gave us Jesus, uh, to die in our place, uh, that's love, uh, to hang on the cross, uh, that's love, uh, to take nails in his hands, uh, that's love, uh, praise in his feet, uh, that's love, uh, a crown of thorns uh, on his head, uh, that's love, uh, that's what Jesus uh, did in our behalf, uh, Oh man, uh, till he died, uh, I'm so glad uh, that he died, uh, aren't you glad uh, he died for you, uh, it was love uh, that he did it for us, uh, I'm so glad uh, the story don't end uh, of him dying, uh, uh, he was buried, uh, but three days later, uh, he got up uh, because he loved, uh, got up early, uh, Sunday morning, uh, and he all right. I'm so glad uh, nothing uh, can keep us uh, from the love of God. Uh, nothing you think of, uh, uh, nothing you think of, uh, nothing you say uh, can keep us uh, from it. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, so glad uh, for the love. Uh, his love uh, saved us. Uh, his love uh, turned us around. Uh, his love uh, healed us uh, when we sinned. Uh, yeah.
And at this time, we are going to continue to do like we have done in the previous Sundays. For someone that might be listening today, we want to extend this invitation to you today because we never know and we never take it for granted that everyone who's listening to us is saved. But if you're out there today and you have been moved by what you have heard, we offer Christ to you. We offer the one that God sent, amen, to save this world, that whosoever believeth in him would not have to perish, but have the promise of everlasting life. And so if you're out there today, and I don't mind, as I have done, giving you my number, if you want to call me privately, that's 219-201-5676. If you're out there and you need to talk to me, just give me a call. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because we want to let you know that this is a time for us. Amen. To be saved. A time for us to come to the Lord while we still have breath to breathe. And so our invitation to you is to consider it today. Because we don't know what our next day may hold. We don't even know what the rest of this day have for us. But it's good to know that God's love can make a change in your life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Today we certainly want to thank the Lord for this wonderful time. Amen. That he has certainly let us be able to have today. And I do want to thank these that were able to come with us today, uh, our voices, and certainly our musicians. Certainly thank them for accompanying us that we may be able to provide a service to those who are out there watching us live on Facebook. And I do pray that we have been a blessing to you this day. Amen. And my prayer is that you look at that text again and even revisit it just to see that nothing can keep us from it. Know that God's love is just that great and mighty. Amen. So at this time, I did say as we started the service today that we will be administering our Lord's Supper. And I do pray that right now many are preparing to take it with us who may be watching us today uh, because we're so happy to have this privilege. And one thing in saying this, the scripture does declare this as often as you do it. You show forth my death until I return. Yes. And so, so I'm glad that we have this moment to share this on this first Sunday uh, in this month of May 2020. And we are going to get ready to just bless the cup and bread before we get ready to take. So let us just bow. God, we thank you for this privilege. We thank you for being able to take our time to honor you. And most of all, we thank you for your sacrifice, the bread which represents our body that we eat, and then the cup that we drink of which represents your blood. We thank you for letting it be a reminder to us of the sacrifice of you offering your body and our behalf that you would save us, certainly from our sins. So God, we pray that everyone who join us now to take, Lord, let them take that bread and let them drink that cup, certainly in remembrance of you. So God, we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, and those that may have received this, I do want to read uh, from our little card here uh, that we have. Do this in remembrance of me. Having taken bread, he gave thanks and, and broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is being given for you. This do in remembrance of me. <clears throat> in like manner, he took also the cup after the supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which shall be shared for you. Luke 22, 19 through 20. And so at this time, we want to go ahead and get ready to take it and, and go ahead. And those that are ready, we want to go ahead and take the bread and eat, which represents our Lord's body. In like manner, let's drink the cup, which represents his blood. This we do in remembrance of him. Amen. And certainly God bless you. And we do want to uh, again say 
I was on the back of the card. I did wanted to read this just briefly to those who are out there listening with us. Uh, the Lord suffer reminds us His grace is sufficient for whatever we're going through. And and not only that, uh, it says uh, in those in that verse there. Yeah, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, King James Version. And our final thing, and this is on behalf of Pastor and Sister Adams, we miss each of you so much. And we look forward to that time where we all can gather fully in this physical house. So as I say in closing, and we know how it ended when they took the supper, they sung a hymn and they went out. But my uh, closure to everyone is God bless you. And we pray that God will let us be together real soon. Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day in the Lord.